friend, welcome to session three of yoga at school or at home, either way. This is our third session together, um, celebrating multiculturalism. And the book we are going to read and culture that we are going to celebrate this week is um, the African American or um, black culture. I had no idea that black is people who are what we would call African American, the word that they use to, dis to describe their culture, not necessarily the color of their skin. The author of this book, she is African American, and she said she was all set to teach her daughters about um, Black History Month. And the, her daughter said, wait, we're not black, we're brown. And so she had to think, why do we call it Black History Month? And that is because that's the term that's used to describe the culture, not necessarily the color of the skin. So that's something I learned just by reading through this book today. And um, I hope we can uncover some more treasures together as we strive to know more about the people in our community and our world. To begin today, we are going to do a different type of breath work. Now, before the past two weeks, we've done the breath ball. This is a great tool. What I'm gonna teach you today is something you can do by yourself that you don't need a breath ball along. Some of you might have done this technique in class or at home. Some of you may have not. It's something I really like. So let's see, there's two ways to do it. It's finger tracing breath. Now, some kids learn up and down. You trace with your other hand like this, inhaling going up and exhaling going down. That is one option to trace with your other finger. The other option is to trace up and down with your thumb. And since you can see my hand so clearly, and since this is something you could do with really nobody even noticing when you're feeling stressed or walking around, I'm gonna teach you this one today, okay? All right, so be ready. Sit up nice and tall. I'm kind of slouching. We'll sit up nice and tall. Put one hand up and put your thumb at the base of your pointer finger, okay? From there, tracing up your index finger, your pointer finger, inhale. Tracing down, exhale. Move to your tall finger. Inhaling, trace up your tall finger. Exhaling, trace down. Ring finger. Inhaling, trace up your tall finger. Exhaling, trace down. Pinky finger, inhaling, trace up. Exhaling, trace down. Good, back to your ring finger. Inhaling, trace up. Exhaling, trace down. Back to your tall finger, inhaling, trace up, exhaling, trace down. Back to your pointer finger, inhaling, trace up, exhaling, trace down. Very good. Friends, that's something you can do all on your own. Remember to go nice and slow, okay? Slow breath is a cue to your body to take a rest. We know that because when we're sleeping, our breath is slow and deep, okay? All right, friends. We are going to practice that at the end of our practice again when you're lying on your back. One, it'll give us more practice, and two, it'll be something relaxing to do when we're lying down. Today, we're going to expand our yoga practice even a little more. We're going to start the same way that we did um, last week. And our standing poses are very similar at the beginning as well. But at the end, we're gonna add in some balancing poses and some a little one stretching pose. And then a resting pose at the end where we'll do our five finger breath again. Okay, friends, that being said, let's go ahead and get into a space where we have room to move our body, okay? 
So I'm way back here because the camera has to see me. So going into child's pose, you can start on your knees, knees wide or together, and then walk your hands down and your um, elbows, and then go ahead and rest your head on your fists, stacked fists, or on your mat. Feel two more breaths coming through here. Your belly once again pushing into your legs and then returning to its soft self. Good. From here, friends, come up into tabletop once more like last week. We're going to do our cat and cow poses. Remember cat or cow, excuse me. You drop your belly, your shoulders, and head are up. Stay right where you are. I'm just shifting so you can see. Drop your belly, head up, cow. Here you can inhale for this pose. Then exhaling, arch your back, cat. Inhaling for cow. Exhaling for cat. One more. Inhaling for cow, exhaling for cat. Very good. I'll stay here once more. Move your hands just a smidge up ahead and then tuck your toes and come into your downward dog. Remember, you can measure by going into high plank. Let's see, I need to make, move my feet a little bit and pop back. And that's the right place for your hands and your feet. Remember, if this feels too tight, you can bend your knees a little bit into your, for your down dog. Okay, friends, from here, step your feet toward your hands. You stay where you are, I'm just shifting so you can see me. Raise your hands up overhead and bring your hands to heart. So far, we're just the same as last week and the week before, actually, right here. Pressing your hands together in mountain, engaging your thigh muscles and your belly muscles, nice and strong. Very good. Okay, stepping back into your warrior one, choosing a leg you'd like to use today. Remember your front knee is bent, your back leg is straight, arms up overhead. Very good, warrior one. Okay, you know what comes next, airplane arms wide, shift onto your front foot, looking at something that's not moving. There we go. Back to warrior one. Very good. Okay, here is where we do something a little different today, okay? We're gonna step together into mountain and we're adding two challenging poses. The first is harder than the second. First, you're going to go into chair pose. Chair pose, you have your arms out front like this or up like this. But for today, we'll do this. When you're in a chair, you look down at your feet and see if you can see your toes. If not, if your legs are here, you all shift back closer to that chair and then see if you can find your toes, okay? Once you can find your toes, you're gonna change your arms because we're going into eagle pose. How you do that is bring your elbows together, cross one over the other, and then lock them in, lock your hands in. I'll do that one more time. You bring your elbows together, one over the other, so you're like this, then weave your hands back together. Now, currently, my left elbow is underneath my right, so that means my left leg will go over my right leg, okay? So that's eagle, you can see my foot here, both my legs are bent and I'm in eagle pose. If this kind of arm business does not work for you, you can also put your hands on your shoulders. Okay, this is a big kid pose. If you're like, mm -mm, I'm not in it, just stay in chair, just fine, okay? Okay, let's unwind. We'll shake that out a little bit for our next balancing pose, okay? Stay standing on that same leg we're gonna go into tree. Now a lot of people, a lot more people know about tree. 
You can either kickstand your foot, just keep it on the floor next to your standing foot. You can put your foot up here on your calf, or you can put it up here on your thigh. I would suggest kickstanding today or just here on your calf. Okay, so you're standing, your foot is where you would like it. You're looking again at something that's not moving. And when you're ready, you can raise your arms and your tree branches. Very good. Okay, friends, back to mountain. Excellent work. Now we'll do that on the other side. So we're back to our mountain pose. This time we'll step back with our other leg, the one we did not use last time, okay? Stepping back, remember your front leg is bent, your back leg is straight, your arms are high in the sky. Straight and strong. Very good. Airplane, bring your arms wide. Okay, looking at something that's not moving. Tip forward just a bit. Sometimes, see, I feel kind of tippy. I just put my toe back on the ground. Then you don't fall over. Okay? Okay. Put that foot back on the ground. Back up to your warrior one. And here's where we do our different thing again. Back to mountain. Now, we're going for our eagle or our chair. This kind of prepares us for our eagle. So chair, remember, check in with your toes. There they are. If you can't see them, move those hips back. Now you go post your arms. So this time, I put my opposite arm under. So my right arm is under. You can use whichever you like, just the opposite of the last time. My right arm is under. My right whoa, leg is over. It's kind of tricky, friends, okay? Stay here just for a minute. See what it feels like. Kind of something different. Hmm. You could do this too. Okay. Okay. Let's unwind. And then we'll go ahead and do our tree pose. So we're standing on that same leg. You can kickstand your other foot, remember? Or put it up. Hands at heart to begin with. Looking at something that's not moving. Okay. When you're ready, raise your hands to the sky, grow your tree. And down. Really good friends. That might've been kind of tricky, but I think we got it. Um, you guys are smart kids. You can try new things, right? So I'm gonna tilt my camera down a little bit so you can see me on the floor here. We're going to do a little twist. So find a place you can lay down. Your arms can be wide, they can be up over your head, whichever works better for you in the space that you have. And then you're gonna have your feet planted on the floor. And then kind of shift your hips to the side and let your knees drop to one side, okay? Now, if your knees are pointing to one side like this, you want your nose pointing to the other side. So your nose and your knees are opposite directions. Your hands can be wherever, but you wanna to try to keep both of your shoulders on the ground, okay? Try to keep both of your shoulders on the ground. And this is kind of restful. So just take a couple of big breaths here. I don't know if you can see, the sun is poking through my window. It's pretty nice. Okay, friends, let's bring our knees back to the sky. And then we'll let them drop to the other side. And this time my nose will face you because my knees are pointing away. See how my shoulders are still on the ground. Makes me want a little nap. Okay, friends. You can bring your knees back to the sky, and then we're going to do our five finger breathing once more. So I'm gonna have you guys 
just come long like this on your on the floor or your mat yeah i think this is best laying on your back okay or actually on your side would work too you stay laying down i'm going to get up so you can see me better so friends um i'm kind of leaning over actually let me put this up so I don't have to scrunch into my camera. And we're gonna go back to the five finger breaths once more, okay? So in your laying position, go ahead and we'll do this again, okay? A nice, slow breathing time. Thumb to the base of your finger. Inhaling, tracing up. Exhaling, tracing down. Tall finger. Inhaling, tracing up, exhaling, tracing down. Ring finger, inhaling, tracing up, exhaling, tracing down. Pinky finger, inhaling, tracing up, exhaling, Tracing down, ring finger, tracing up, exhale, tracing down, tall finger, inhale, tracing up, exhale, tracing down, and finally, last one, pointer finger, tracing up, Exhale, tracing down. Good friends. Okay. You can stay there if you would like, if you can see the screen for our book. Black is a rainbow color. Let me scooch to the side here. so You can see and all these pictures that she puts in here have a deeper meaning. So if you ever happen to purchase this book or get it from your library, you can see all that goes into these pictures of thought and research. So here she goes. Red is a rainbow color. Green sits next to blue. Yellow, orange, violet, indigo. They are rainbow colors too. But my color is black and there's no black in rainbows. Black is a crayon tangled in a box. Black is a feather on a white winter snow. Black is the dirt where the sunflowers grow. My color is black. Black are the braids in my best friend's hair. Black are the bottoms of summertime feet. Black are the soft circles that spin down the street. My color is black. Black is a rhythm. Black is the blues. Black is sidewalking in spit shine shoes. Black is the robe on Thoroughgood's back. Black are the trains on railroad tracks. Black are the eyes on a salted peas. Black are the shadows of old magnolia trees. Thoroughgood Marshall was the first African-American Supreme Court Justice. Black is molasses from tall sugar cane. Black is soft singing, hush now. Don't explain. Black is a skillet for bread to, to fry. Black are dreams and raisins left out in the sun to die. Black is the color of an ink stained page. Black is the mask that shelters his rage. Black are the birds in cages that sing. 
Black is a color. Black is a culture. Black is history. Black is family. Black is memory. Black is community. Black is the love that lives inside of me. My color is black. Black are the stones bearing witness to prayer. Black is the faith in a freedom not seen. Friends, they put this, um, these uh, activist faces in church windows because the African Methodist Episcopal Church was very um, instrumental in um, social justice and promoting black people's issues. It was central to the social justice movement. Black was the man who gave the world his dream. Black is the color, black is the culture. And friends, we all know this is Martin Luther King Jr. And his famous, I have a dream speech. Black is the heart of a candle in flame. Black is the power of a movement in pain. And of course, we all saw this um, in Minneapolis. Let's see, gosh, two summers ago now. Black are the branches that carry my name, weaving, wrapping, lifting, laughing, hoping, grasping, quiet and strong. Our color is black. So you see, there is no black in rainbows, no black in green or blue, but in my box of crayons, black is a rainbow color too. Friends, I just wanted to show you in the back of this book, she has all sorts of resources. Um, there's a musical playlist. There is how she decided to put each picture on each page and what they represent. There's poems that were found by black authors that long ago couldn't get published or jobs in their field. And then on this page, they have the history of the word um, black or what different things that black people have been called the name for the culture over the years. So this really is a really good book if you would like to look into it further. All right, friends, thank you for joining me today. I um, enjoyed looking through this book and growing our yoga practice together and practicing our breathing. Maybe you guys could do that as a class or whenever you have a chance. Okay, I'll see you for the next class. Bye.